Hello, everyone. My name is Olivier Yunan, and I will be presenting our paper, Learning to Bid with Auction Gym, today. This is joint work with my colleagues at Amazon, Sean Murphy and Ben Allison. Let's uh, dive right in. So um, as I'm sure many of you are aware, opportunities to show ads online are typically sold off in real-time auctions these days. And so the goal for an advertiser is to participate in those auctions in an attempt to maximize some notion of utility that they might have. Now, these days, um, the advertising auctions that are happening are rarely incentive compatible. And so bidding truthfully is not going to be an optimal strategy for the advertiser. And thus, a new task arises where we want to learn a bidding strategy that maximizes utility. And ideally, we would want to learn this from data. And so that's going to be the, the core focus of, of this talk. Um, I have a figure to help illustrate the high level flow. So we have a user on the left of the slide that is browsing some website and an impression opportunity arises. Um, this opportunity is then sent to the ad exchange who sends bid requests to all possible bidders. Um, and so we are going to be one of those bidders where we have a bidding policy that is going to decide the bid we want to place. And then if we win the auction with our bid, we actually get to show our ad. So how do you actually learn to bid? Um, well, first we need to agree on an objective. Right? And the objective we will focus on is utility. Um, so we define this as the value that we're getting from showing ads minus the price that we need to pay for them, um, which is also called SERP. And so we will only obtain value or need to pay a price um, for the auction rounds that we win. And so we can decompose utility as it's shown on the slide uh, as value minus price for the auctions that we're winning. Now, the value that we get is going to depend on the ads that we show, whereas the winning probability um, and the price we need to pay will depend on the bids that we're actually placing in the auction. So the goal now becomes to maximize this notion of utility, uh, given that we sample bids according to some sort of contextual policy. Pi. And so pi is going to define a conditional probability distribution over bids, um, given an advertisement A and a context X. So the high level objective is shown in equation two, um, where we want to maximize expected utility given that bids are sampled from this policy file. Now, we often don't have access to samples from this distribution. And so pure online learning uh, is not really something that's easy to do here. Um, but in contrast, we do have a certain production system with a certain policy in place by not. And so what we have here is really a sort of kind of factual estimation problem where we want to estimate the utility that the new policy pi will obtain um, given samples from the logging policy pi naught. And then we want to learn the policy pi that is actually going to maximize this estimation. Um, now there's sort of different ways to do this. Um, and we basically now need to choose which kind of factual estimator we would like to use. There's sort of three broad families of estimation. First one are value-based methods, so, um, which we also call the direct method in the band of literature. Um, and so what you would do here is you try to model the reward that you will get from placing a specific bid. And then when a new bid request comes in, you use this reward model to infer the optimal bid. Most existing work is going to fit in this sort of paradigm. Think of win rate estimators and first price option. Now, value-based methods they have low variance typically, but very high bias um, because you know it's going to be uh, very hard to actually model the auction and the competition dynamics uh, in a very sort of accurate manner. And so, a second uh, family of methods are policy-based methods, and so they do not explicitly model the rewards, uh, but using inverse propensity scoring, what they do is they they sort of try to obtain an unbiased estimate of the rewards that the new policy is going to obtain. Um, so. Basically, when a bit placed by the logging policy leads to high utility, uh, what we want to do is increase the sort of probability of placing that bit under the new policy. And so this gives you an unbiased estimator, um, but these policy-based methods sort of typically tend to suffer from high variance, um, which can definitely become um, a problem when you're dealing with these sort of uh, very finite sample scenarios that, that we have to deal with. But luckily for us, there is a third family of estimators that really sort of try to get the best of both worlds, uh, and they are called W-robust estimators. And so 
using both a reward model and the propensity scores, a doubly robust estimator is going to be unbiased. Um, and if we assume a reasonable reward model, it's going to have lower variance than pure inverse propensity score. And so that's that's great, right? Um, now, we would really like to figure out whether these two new ways of, of framing this optimization problem um, is actually going to improve over the, the value-based lens that most existing work has taken. And so that moves us to really a core question. How do you properly evaluate? Um, now, as machine learning researchers and practitioners, I think we often have the reflex of thinking about offline experiments. Um, so you know, we have huge amounts of data. Um, we do a train test split. We can use these same counterfactual estimators as valuation metrics on our test set. Um, and we're gold, right? Um, except that we're not, because doing this is going to lead to a phenomenon known as Goodhart's law. Uh, so Goodhart's law states that when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to become, uh, it ceases to be a good measure. So the, the, the problem here really is that we have three evaluation metrics. We have three objective functions. Uh, and because there's a one-on-one -on -one mapping between them, the choice of evaluation metric is going to rather trivially sort of tell you the optimal objective function, which is really going to be the one that, that is sort of directly optimizing the same estimator. Um, OK, so we will really won't be able to do much from pure offline experiments. Um, but maybe that's no problem, right? Um, we can just go straight to an A-B test. Um, now, that is also going to be a problem because they are very expensive. You know, they sort of typically spend several weeks. Um, you, you need to bring every research idea up to standards for production code. Uh, and so, you know, for these reasons and for many others, running A-B tests is really just uh, a very expensive thing to do. And it's, it's not something that you use as a first-line validation tool. So what now? Well. Maybe luckily for us, um, the reinforcement learning research community is well aware of these issues, and they have really embraced the use of simulations to validate them. And this has really led to, to strong empirical progress in the last sort of half decade or so. And this is where I would like to uh, sort of introduce Oxygen, which is a simulation environment um, that actually gave its name to this paper. Um, and so what Oxygen is going to do is it's going to simulate sort of online advertising auctions really in an end-to-end -end map where we have an impression opportunity that is going to naturally arise. Then an auctioneer is going to present this opportunity to some bidders. Um, these bidders then sort of internally need to decide first which ad they want to show and secondly, uh, how much they're actually willing to bid for it. Um, and then the auctioneer is going to decide on an auction winner um, and the price that they would need to pay. Then the winning ad is shown to the user um, and it might possibly lead to some sort of conversion events that is going to be observable by the winning bidder. And so this is a, a single auction round, which we sort of repeatedly simulate. And every, let's say, delta rounds, um, bidders will sort of update their models and their beliefs based on the new data that they have observed. And so the, the goals and ambitions for Auction Gym are really to be useful as a research and validation tool. Uh, that does not rely on sensitive proprietary data. Okay, great. Um, so we now know how we can learn to bid. We now have a way of validating our results empirically offline. Um, so which estimator do I use? And so you know the the sort of core research questions I want to tackle uh, in the rest of this sort of short video uh, is how does my learning to bid method actually going to affect my profit? Um, assuming sort of first price auctions, and uh, there's much more detail in the, the paper about this. Um, so what we're showing here is the return on ad spend for bidding policies that were optimized for different estimators. So the direct method, um, if it's propensity scoring, and our W robust estimator. And so what we're seeing here actually mimics really closely what you would expect from theory. The, the value-based method has low variance with high bias, and so it's going to sort of converge rather quickly to a suboptimal state, uh, whereas the sort of policy-based method is unbiased but has high variance. Um, and so sort of after like a million auction rounds, it might actually start to do better than the value-based method, um, but it's really going to remain relatively unstable. Um, whereas the doubly robust estimator that we have proposed is really able to very consistently do better um, whilst remaining relatively unstable. And so one of the nice things about auction gym is that we can now really try to understand why this method is doing better. And so we can have a look at notions of overbid or underbid widget, which is defined as the loss and surplus that you'd get from either bidding too much or not bidding enough. 
And so we first see that the scale of the sort of overbid rigette is much higher. Um, and so that really is the core issue with existing methods. We are not really shading too aggressively, but maybe we're really often not shading sort of aggressively enough. Um, and so we see that um, basically rather instantaneously, the W robust estimator is going to shade its bits slightly more aggressively than the value-based estimator. And so that's going to lead to decreased overbid regret with a slight increase in underbid regret. Um, and so I do sort of want to point out that you know, these are just some of the research questions that you can answer using Oxygen, um, but there's much more in, in, in the paper. Uh, and there's much more sort of open questions that we haven't really begun to answer um, yet. So um, to conclude, I would like to reiterate the, the core contributions of our work. So we have presented a general framework for bandit-based learning to bid, which has allowed us to view existing approaches through a new lens um, and to propose novel approaches to tackle this problem, leveraging W robust estimator. We then introduce Auction Gym, which is really a tool that can hopefully benefit researchers as well as practitioners. Um, and we have presented some of the insights that we gained through Auction Gym uh, that sort of cannot be straightforwardly extracted from log data. Um, and so there is much more detail in the paper, um, and I would encourage you to read it if you like this, this sort of stuff. Um, then um, I would just like to thank you for listening. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have, so feel free to reach out to me or my colleagues. Um, and this QR code will bring you straight to the GitHub repository for Auction Jib, um, so be sure to check that out as well. Thank you. <laughs>